Find the component form of the vector v if the magnitude is equal to nine square root 85, and when drawn in a standard position, vector v lies in quadrant one and makes an angle measuring arctangent nine halves with the positive x-axis. So we know the vectors in the first quadrant, let's say this is vector v, and because the magnitude is nine square root 85, we know the length of the vector is nine square root 85. And now let's form a right triangle by sketching the horizontal and vertical components of the given vector. So this would be the x component or horizontal component, and this would be the vertical or y component. And the angle theta is the angle measured from the positive x-axis to the vector rotating counterclockwise, this angle here, which we know measures arctangent nine halves. So using this reference triangle, we might be thinking we can label the opposite side nine and the adjacent side two, but that's not true because it could be any multiple of the ratio of nine to two. So let's label the opposite side nine n and the adjacent side two n. If we try to use two and nine, two squared plus nine squared does not equal nine square 85 and that would be incorrect. And now if we can find two n and nine n, we can determine the x and y components of the given vector. And we can do this by applying the Pythagorean theorem, again, because we do have a right triangle, where the Pythagorean theorem is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. c squared is the square of the hypotenuse, which is the square of nine square root 85. And a squared plus b squared is the sum of the squares of the legs does not matter which one is a, which one is b. So we have the square of 2n plus the square of 9n. And now to square 9 square root 85, we square 9, which is 81, and then we multiply by the square of the square root of 85, which is 85. This is equal to the square of 2n, which is 4n squared, plus the square of 9n, which is 81n squared. Combining like terms, we have 81 times 85 is equal to 85 n squared. And now I'm not gonna find the product on the left because notice now, if we divide both sides by 85, we can easily simplify the left side to just 81. We now have 81 is equal to n squared. And now to solve for n, we take the square root of both sides of the equation. We are going to get a positive and negative value for n but because we are in the first quadrant, we know n has to be positive. So algebraically, we have n equals plus or minus nine, but again, because n has to be positive, we only use n equals nine. So if n is equal to nine, two n is equal to 18, and nine n is equal to nine times nine, which is 81. Which means we now know the x component is 18, and the y component is 81. Now you might be wondering why we didn't just find the angle theta using our tangent nine halves. We can do this, but the angle is going to be messy, and therefore we'd have more of an error when determining these components. But let's also show that. Angle theta is equal to arc tangent of nine halves. Going to the calculator in degree mode to two decimal places, we have approximately 77.47 degrees. And now applying the formula below, where the x component is the magnitude of v times cosine theta, and the y component is the magnitude of v times sine theta, we would have vector v has an x component of nine square root 85 times cosine of 77.47 degrees, and a y component of nine square root 85 times sine 77.47 degrees. And now let's go to the calculator and compare this to the exact values that we already found. Nine square root 85 right arrow cosine 77.47 degrees. Notice how it does not give us exactly 18 it gives us approximately 18.0017. And let's check the y component. 
let's go ahead and press second enter and then just change cosine to sine. And notice how the y component would be approximately 80.9996 rather than 81. So taking the first approach, notice how we get the exact components. Taking the second approach, we only get decimal approximations. I hope you found this helpful.